All right, so half of you were off doing a lab, the other half, here you go. We're going to learn about uh, vectors at 90 degrees, which we've done already a bit. Pretty straightforward. Anyway, unit two reminder, when you have multiple vectors, kind of like Carl on the people mover at the airport. Uh, Carl was going, his legs were bringing him forward. When the people mover was forward, we had to add those together. We made them head to tail, and that gave us a resultant. And the resultant was determined by circling the start, Xing the finish, and doing the shortcut directly from start to finish, if you remember doing that. Uh, also with Carl, we had the possibility of Carl going one way and people mover going the other way when he was going backwards on it. Still, you would make those head to tail, circle the start, X to finish, that sort of thing. So when we combined different vectors, they would add, that's adding vectors, really making them head to tail, circle and X, draw the shortcut. That's really the, the add protocol or algorithm. But when you're adding them, you end up with a result that we call a resultant. The result is always a new vector. Sometimes it's zero, but often a new vector we call the result. So here are the tips that we have for it. Vectors, of course, can be translated and moved around freely, but you got to maintain the length and the direction. So no stretching it, no shrinking it, no rotating it. Keep it as it is. For example, with these red vectors up here, this one is this long and to the right. You can move it wherever you want, but it better be that long and to the right. Same thing with this one. It's this length, it's a bit longer and up and to the right. Move it wherever you want, but it better stay that length and also pointing up and to the right. So in this case, with these three, if you wanted to put them together, move them around, head to tail, boom, there's head to tail, and boom, there's head to tail. Circle the start, X the finish. So here's the start. The exposed tail is the start. Follow the path. Do -do 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 -do. Arrows direct to where to go. Do -do 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 Ah, there it is. The exposed head is the finish. There's the X. I'm going to try to draw this one a little more carefully. So our final line here, our resultant, that should be directly from the circle, the X. There it is. And the neat thing about this is no matter which order you put them in, let's take that resultant away. Maybe you go this one first, this one second, this one third, you still circle the exposed tail, X the exposed head, and draw your resultant. And as it turns out, it is, boom, exactly the same. So the order doesn't even matter which order you do them in. As long as you head to tail them, circle the start, X to finish. It's a real algorithm for getting you the resultant. And each individual piece, what they are called their components, each individual component must maintain its length and its direction. All right, so there's that step one, orient them so they're head to tail. And then step two, circle the start, exit, finish, draw the result. Now, notice what the title of this page is. It's at 90 degrees. And so the reason we're doing 90 degrees is because we are doing 2D projectiles. 2D projectiles, basically, you have an object that, for example, what we've been practicing, let's say here's our little cliff edge. Here you have a little car going off the cliff. There it goes. It is moving both in the horizontal and the vertical directions. Sorry, the spacing's not great. And the vertical should be increasing spacing, and the cliff is dropping it. And the horizontal should be steady because there is no horizontal force causing it to accelerate. Anyway, these two directions combine just like what you see here. Here is actually our horizontal direction, also known as the X. The vertical direction, also known as the Y. And when you combine the two, you end up with something diagonal. It's that curved trajectory. All right. So... What you'll have to do, actually, in this Unit 4, and more so to come, is uh, you'll have to sometimes figure out the resultant of two perpendicular vectors. Of course, those two perpendicular vectors are just these, the x and the y. 
horizontal and the vertical components together combining to give you this curved trajectory. Okay, so just as a reminder, we've talked about this. All vector quantities and regions physics come in what we call three flavors. Flavor is just a made up word, but just a way of thinking about three different versions of kind of the same basic thing. Those three flavors are X component, also known as horizontal, Y component, known as vertical, and resultant. As a reminder, if the component is not mentioned, it implies resultant. This is really an important point right here. If the component is not mentioned, it implies resultant. We talked about this on page, was it? Up over here on notes page seven. We had those different flavors of acceleration, velocity, displacement, but not time. Time is not a vector. All right, let's go back over here. So let's look at a real problem. A ball has a horizontal velocity of 30 meters per second. Okay, there's a uh, VX we can call that. And a vertical velocity of 40 meters per second. There's a VY. And this one is downward. Determine the magnitude of the ball's velocity. Okay, so you can come over here and set your givens. You know, that's no problem. You can know, see Vx if you want to be picky about it. Get your numbers just right. It is a velocity. So Vx, maybe we can call rightward positive. Why not? So Vx is 30 meters per second. And that's going to be positive. And Vy is going to be... Let's call, since it's going downward, we can call it downward positive. No reason not to. Vy will give you your positive 40 meters per second. What's the question actually asking for here? It says, determine the magnitude of the ball's velocity. Notice it did not mention horizontal. It did not mention vertical. In fact, it was not mentioned at all. That means result. What they're actually looking for here is they say magnitude of. Well, technically in math, you would write that like this. We don't care about what direction, but that's what we're trying to find. Easiest way to deal with these problems where you have components of velocities, honestly, is graphically. Just draw them. Easiest way to do this. So Vx, that's horizontal. To the right, 30, so boom, here it is, Vx, that one's 30. Vy, well, you can draw it wherever you want, but the most sensible place to draw it, of course, is already head to tail. If you remember our protocol up here was to make them so they're head to tail. So if you have the opportunity to do that from the outset, take advantage of it. All right, so let's jump to it. So I'm going to put it right out here. Now, this one's 40, so it should be 30 plus a little. So there's my 40. All right, it's already hit the tail, good to go. Circle to start, X to finish, let's get this thing in order. Here's circle to start, X to finish. There it is. Now you could have recognized this algebraically, X, Y, and this is resultant. Maybe you wanna put a little R here for resultant, just to remind yourself. The uh, resultant is always, you know, we have this, we started talking about this in class today, the resultant column, which I've told you, you know, kind of beware of, the resultant is always going to be determined by doing Pythagorean's theorem. It's always going to be the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. If that looks weird to you, this is just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except then we're square rooting both sides, so we get just c by itself. So you could have figured this out just by doing it algebraically. Or you could have come over here and say, ah, there it is. And then, of course, you would plug it in and do it like this. And then uh, the substituted equation, well, you could substitute those numbers, get that yourself. You could also recognize it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, 30, 40, 50. Since it only asks for the magnitude, we don't care about which direction. There is a direction, and it's not positive or negative. It's actually defined by this angle. You might say at whatever number of degrees this is, below right. That's another way to say that. 
Okay. Now, of course, within a problem, this is a nice little reminder. You can only make a resultant with components of the same sort. So you can't mix a velocity and a displacement or an acceleration and a velocity. It's got to be two velocities or two accelerations or two displacements. So they have to not only have the same units, they have to be the same physical quantity. All right, here's another one. This one's a little harder. The plane is attempting to land in a strong westward pushing crosswind. All right, the engines are directing it at 150 meters per second northward. Why don't we call that positive? All right, so let's start setting this up. So I can come over here with my givens of units. So the velocity of, let's say, the engines. There it is. It's going to be 150 meters per second northward. We call it north positive. Writing on here is... The track pad's a little slow. If we had this really the right thing we should be doing over here, we should be calling the north positive up here. We should be defining things. And then we have the, let's just say here, and its velocity is 200 meters per second northwest. Whoa, what's this here? Its velocity. That doesn't say vertical. That doesn't say horizontal. That doesn't say north. That doesn't say east. It says just plain old velocity. The component is not mentioned. That is the result. So the resultant velocity, velocity resultant, or you just write it as V, is 200 meters per second. Now this one's a little complicated because it says northwest. You know, let's see what we can do with that. And then the final question is, what is the magnitude of the crosswind? What is the magnitude of the crosswind velocity? That's a very nice important. So the velocity of the wind is what we're looking for. And actually, it asks for a magnitude, so we're not even worried about direction. We take that off at the end. All right, so you can do this algebraically. But it's definitely easier to see what's going on if you sketch it. All right. So it's a, uh, the engine's directly, maybe we'll call north up on the paper. Let's call this way north. So engine's directed at 150 meters per second north. So I'll put a little arrow here. Here's my 150 north. Okay, good. Then, it says its actual velocity is 200 northwest. Oh, well, this is an interesting one. You see, I'm going to draw it off to the side right now. This is the resultant. The resultant is going to be 200 that's longer northwest, 200. I'm not connecting it yet. Here's the thing. It's the components that connect at the tail. It's the components. Notice the components at the tail, here it is. Even when we did it over here. At the tail, at the tail, at the tail. Even right here, at the tail. It's the components. The resultant, however, its tail, it started where the whole thing started, where the components started. And it ended where all of the components together ended. So the resultant itself actually goes tail to tail and head to head. Hopefully what you can see here is that the crosswind must be pushing to the west or to the left. That's the only possible way you'll end up north and west. So the crosswind has to be something like this. That's what we're actually looking for. And therefore, the resultant must be here. Aha! So this V is what we're looking for. So hopefully when you're doing your math here, you're like, oh, wait a minute. This one is a little different than the previous question. If you want to have your, uh, this is your velocity of the engine. So velocity of the engine squared plus velocity of the wind squared is going to equal to the resultant velocity squared. And of course, you can run your numbers here. So this is basically, you get your 150 in here. You don't know your V here, but you do know this is going to be so plus V squared over here. You do know this one over here is 200. 
And so you end up solving for this. Solve for the v squared, square root, the subtraction now. And uh, sorry, we have to square this 150. And then you will get what it is. There's one more question on here, and that is what is the angle between the north and northwest vectors? Well, first you have to identify what they're talking about. North is this one, northwest is this one. So this is that angle. This is that angle. That's a problem you've got to figure out. So maybe you have another set of givens. I'll sneak them over here. The angle is the question mark. Of course, this is just a Sokotoa problem. That's all, an inverse Sokotoa. Since they already gave me the what's right next to it, adjacent and the hypotenuse. I have the adjacent here. I have the hypotenuse. Honestly, you could use any of the trig functions because you will have the opposite as well. But if they give me adjacent and hypotenuse, I can actually come over here and write this like this. Adjacent is 150 meters per second. And hypotenuse is 200 meters per second. And then we can figure out that angle. And if you're not sure, just go through your Sokotoa motions. This is adjacent and hypotenuse. This is ka. So the unsubstituted equation, you can say cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, what some of you are jumping to immediately, which actually I hope you do, is you're solving for theta. So how do you get rid of cosine? You have to do inverse cosine. If you inverse cosine both sides, what you're left with is theta equals inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse. And then you can substitute all that business. That's an adjacent on top. And so this state is just going to be inverse cos of 150 over 200. Put that in here. And make sure you're in degrees here, not in radians. And you'll get the answer. Notice the answers are on the page. So try me a calculator. It should work out just fine. All right, that's it. So I know it took a little time, but basically uh, that's really all you got to worry about here. They're always going to be right angle. And just make sure you're paying attention. Get the components head to tail. If they don't mention which component, then it is the resultant. And the resultant, you have to recognize, connects the start to the finish. So the component's tail should start with the exposed tail. And the component's head, or sorry, the resultant's tail should start with the exposed tail of the components. And the resultant's head should end with the exposed head of the components. All right.